Hi folks, Bill here with 3D Chameleon. I had a question the other day about how to actually enable uh, PVA or water soluble supports uh, on a uh, one of the extruders with the 3D Chameleon. So I thought I'd do a quick little walkthrough video to show you how this actually works. So what I've done is I've actually set up my uh, Mark IV, my Prusa Mark IV here, with uh, three PLAs and the fourth one has a support material in it. So let's just go ahead and add a couple object shapes here to the uh, build plate. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate these by 45 degrees so that we can get supports generated. And we'll just copy that and paste that. And we'll go over here and we'll assign the three colors. So uh, as I click on one, I just type a one, type a two, and type a three, and that assigns those. So when I slice this right now, you see I get a support material that's mixed between the uh, the uh, three colors of PLA that we're using and in this case it's 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 uh, doing an optimally between red and white uh, red and blue okay so what I really want to happen though is I want the PVA material to be the support material around here so let's go ahead and fix that and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to multiple extruders and I'm going to tell it the support material uh, is extruder number four. And as soon as I try to uh, enter, hit enter on that, it gives me this weird cryptic dialog box that says the white tower currently supports the non-soluble supports only if they are printed with the current extruder without triggering a tool change. What an odd message to tell you. Both the support material extruder and support material interface extruder need to be set to zero. And this, this actually gives you the feeling that you cannot use a, uh, an extruder for support material if you have the white tower turned on. This dialog box is complete trash. It has absolutely nothing to do with telling you what the real issue is. Let me show you what the real issue is. By the way, if I say yes, it sets these back to zero. If I say no, it turns off the white tower instead of actually fixing the issue that actually exists. Let me show you what the issue is. If we go to support material, if you look at this, we have this one called top contact Z distance and it's set to 0.2 millimeters. The other one that it's uh, referring to is synchronize with object layer. This one is the real issue. Synchronizing with the object layer basically is saying, hey, the layer heights of your supports have to match the layer heights of your object. Remember, in Prusa Slicer, we can have variable layer heights. And what their, their supports do by default is optimize the amount of material that's being extruded to minimize uh, how much you're wasting. Okay, So it's a really good option. But because of this feature here, and they still don't tell you exactly what this means, it's preventing the other ones from working. So let's fix that. The reason why we have uh, a different layer height is because we have a different spacing between our parts and the support material. If we set that spacing to zero, meaning that we're using soluble supports, you'll see as soon as I do that, that enables this object, this uh, option here which allows us to synchronize the top of the supports with the bottom of the parts. So if I turn that on, this actually fixes the issue that these were having. And in fact, once I have this set to four, I can turn this back on and you see it has no more errors. The next one I want to do is I also want to have the interface layers. That's the part that the, the your 3D model and the supports where they actually touch. That's a, a little bit of material in between there where they actually interface um, in the support material as well. So now when I re-slice this, you'll see that it has my, well, let's just change the color of this so it's a little clearer. Now you can see that the support material is uh, our fourth color here, right? So that actually uh, fixed it and gave us what we want. Now, um, in some cases, maybe you don't want to be wasting this much PVA. PVA tends to be more expensive than PLA, 
and um, with that you can actually change this up a little bit you can minimize by setting this back to zero and when I reslice it you'll see now that I only have at the interface between the two parts the very expensive material everything else is just cheap PLA you can also in this case see that it's using red and white as our support material um, it could you could force that hand and set it to some other material um, you know set them all to blue for example that way it's always going to be in blue um, but in this case because we're changing the colors on every layer it's actually more optimal to be uh, switch between the the red and the white here um, and then once you put drop this in the water this goes away and all you have is this remaining waste now of course you can always tune this waste um, the support material make it a little bit less you know you really don't need too much material if you have this interface you don't need as much supports there but um, this should work just fine so now uh, this is PLA one of the things that you can do instead of using an expensive PVA uh, is you can actually go to PETG instead and a PT, PETG is actually will they will separate cleanly from PLA the same way uh, especially on a part that looks like this so a couple little hints there. Anyway, this allows you to um, um, I'll just show you here that you can actually have uh, PLA and a separate material for your support materials. And uh, 3D Chameleon will have no problem driving it. Uh, just be careful, just like they're talking about here. You're going to have different temperature regions for this. Now, this one's saying bed temperatures used for the filaments differ. That's okay because we're not using the we're we're using PLA as our interface layer for the bed, right down here, right. Um, so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, you don't have to worry about the bed temperature on the. Uh, PETG because it's only used in this particular area here very thin amounts now it'll stick just fine to the PLA but once the part cools down and comes off the plate those will snap off cleanly so PETG is a good support material as well as the uh, uh, the uh, PVA which is a water soluble material uh, there's other types as well but so anyway I thought I'd give you that little bit of helpful information there um, as always, uh, feel free to send me an email at bill at 3D Chameleon if you have any more questions. And thanks for watching.